Hello and welcome to my stamp studio. I'm Beth Maxwell, Independent Stampin' Up! Demonstrator, and today is Hump Day. So I am just getting my feed going here, and I have no idea why my camera looks so wonky, but it does. Hold on for just a second, my maybe try to adjust it a little bit. All right, well, it's going to be wonky. Okay, uh, can we get some of the glare off of here? Let's see. There's that glare. Let me just turn my overhead light off and maybe that will reduce some of the glare here. There we go. It's a little better. I do have some of the glare from my other light here, but I do need light on the subject, so hopefully. Okay, well that looks a little better. All right, so welcome, welcome. We're going to have a quick card today. We're going to be playing with our watercolor pencils our Sweet Peas stamp set that is in our annual catalog. And we will also be using our Fluid 100 paper. So this is watercolor paper because we'll be using our aqua painters today. So with that, whenever you use aqua painters and water, watercolor pencils, make sure you use stays on ink. So we'll be using that. Now I have cut up some of my pieces ahead of time and I moved everything around on my desk here. So let me just... This is the card that we're going to be making, but we're going to change this up. This one I did with blends. This time, though, we're going to be doing it with watercolor paper because I wanted to use the pencils. So I have a scrap piece of paper I'm going to put off to the side here, um, and that is because I tend to stamp off I'll move this over just a little bit. Uh, stamp off my uh, stays on before I put it through my cleaner. Now, when I use my stays on stamps, I always use a stays on cleaner. Uh, that will take it off. And you do need to clean that pretty quickly. You can't leave it set there. Otherwise, it will stay permanently stain your stamps. All right. So let's get on with some of the things. I already have my pencils pulled out that I want to use. I have taken um, this paper is five by seven, five by seven. I've already run it through the die cut machine uh, and cut out this from our nested essentials dies. And then I also took it in the lemon lime twist and did the next size up. So I have my little layers there. I have an eight and a half by five and a half piece of um, peach pie cardstock. I have a piece of garden green that's three and one eighth by five and a half so that's going to be layered right there i also have a piece of the duck pond designer series paper it's three inches by six inches i'm going to adhere these two together and then i'll trim that off so why don't i just start with that and we'll get our adhesive here i'm just going to put it right on here pretty quick and easy card i just wanted to show you a little bit of different technique today using watercolor pencils. I have my watercolor pencils and I don't use them quite as much as I would like. So I thought today would be really fun to use them. So I'm just gonna go here, take my trimmer and just cut off that excess. There we go. Now it's the perfect length. Throw that piece away, I don't need that. And I'm going to adhere this right to my card front. I am making some substitutions from my original card. Like I said, I'm using watercolor pencils instead of my blends. I do have a piece of um, the iridescent stripe trim that we'll be using. I just made a bow. I'm going to be using that on the side here. Okay, <clears throat> first step. Let's get our sentiment stamped. Let me get my longer stamp here. And I'm going to be taking You Make Me Happy. I just thought this is such an adorable set. I really can't wait to use it. This is actually going to be uh, the stamp set featured in my August Club. So if you purchase that now, it's bonus days here at Stampin' Up. So when you purchase $50 in my online store, Stampin' Up is going to send you a $5 coupon good to be used in August. So you could plan ahead and get your stamp 
setting out. Now, what I'm doing here off to my side, you can't quite see it, is I'm stamping on just a piece of scrap paper. I like to get a lot of that ink off before I put my cleaner on. I just find that, I'm going to press my cleaner right in there, I just find that it helps me get my stamps cleaner. It will discolor a little bit. It happens. All right, there we go. But that's pretty clean. Now, the stays on cleaner is going to leave like a little bit of an oil or a film on there. So just make sure later on that you just wipe it off. And let's see, we need our little peas in a pod stamp. So might as well get that out. We'll stamp that right away. Another thing about stays on is that it evaporates very quickly. Okay, it dries super quick. So when you're doing this, make sure that you have your cleaner right away and that you clean in between each time. And I usually cover my stamp pad every time I stamp. I forgot to do that before. So now I'm going to just press it down. Don't hold too long on your paper because stays on will be kind of sticky. So when you do that, so I'm doing right here, it's just stamping that off. Uh, when you do that, it can kind of tear your paper if you've held it on there too long. So just, you know, make sure it's well inked. Scrub your stamp a little bit. I like to use my um, stamping scrub when I'm cleaning this just because I know it's going to get cleaner. And it will, like I said, stay stain a little bit. Go ahead and add a little bit more cleaner if you want. I've been using this quite a bit, so I have a lot of, uh, there's been quite a bit of leftover on there. I, I just squeezed some out here. Now, when I did that, I'm going to have to make sure that I actually dry that and remove my stamp right away so it dries. There we go. I'm just going to set it there for you now. And I just realized I don't have my towel here, so I need to grab that. I have a little rag here that I use when I'm doing my watercoloring. It's just going to sit on my lap right now. And the reason I have that out, let's go ahead and put my stamp away before I lose it, is so that I can dab some of the water off my, my um, aqua painter. Now I have two different aqua painters. This is an aqua painter from before. This is a water painter. Just different names, a little bit different style, but they do serve the same purpose. So I'm just going to use this one because that's the one I've been using. I squeezed a little bit of water out onto my towel there just to kind of make sure it was clean. And you can see I'm getting a little bit of water here. Just make sure that this is not too wet. Um, otherwise, your paper will take a longer time to dry. So now I have, all right, I actually did cheat and I have it, but I'm going to show you how I colored it. So I'm going to start with my garden green here. And I am just going to... Kind of just outline here. My water painter is going to make sure everything blends. All right, then I'm going to go along the bottom here. Now, the thing with water painters is be conservative. So you can always add color later, but you really can't take it off once you've added it. So I'm just going to do this little area first. And I like using the pencils because, I don't know, it gives it a really vibrant color. And also, you know, I do like watercolor painting. I used to do that quite a bit when I was younger. All right, and I'm just kind of blending my colors together here. All right. Once I feel like I have too much color or too much water, I can just dab it off on my towel and come back in. Whenever you're using water, I would always recommend using the watercolor paper. I notice here that got really light. When it dries a little bit, it'll take a moment or two to dry. I can come back and add a little more color and then just take my painter over it again. I think I need to squeeze a little bit of water out there. All right. And it is going to give you kind of that blurred look. I mean, that's that's what watercolor painting is all about. All right. Now I'm going to come back in with my 
Granny Apple Green pencil. Oh, I should probably tell you, I am using the Watercolor Assortment 2 package. Um, I, I find that the colors that I wanted to use are in here. So I'm using Granny Apple Green, Garden Green. I'll be using Balmy Blue and Flirty Flamingo. And I'm just actually coloring this pretty lightly. So right now you can kind of see like the color pattern for my pencil. When I take my watercolor painter here, I'm just going to squeeze ever so gently just to get a little bit of water out. Did you see how much water came out now? All right. I'm just going to put that in. And again, I can always go back and add more color. It's really hard to take color away. And actually, I don't think that's too bad. Maybe I'll just leave it just like that. All right. So I want to clean this off. So now I'm the way I'm going to clean this. I'm just going to squeeze so water comes out, and then I'm just going to brush it off. So a paper towel works. Whatever you have. Again, I'm just squeezing that so that water water comes out. And I think this one got stuffed up. All right. We'll just grab the other one. I'll have to soak that. So I've got my water painter again. Just squeezing to see that water coming out. Just making sure there's no residual color on there. Now the next way that you can color with your watercolor pencils is you can actually take your watercolor painter right to your pencil tip and then just add your color to your paper. Okay, if you want that to be a little more thin, oopsie. So I need to actually damp some of that up. There's a little too much. So I like to start where I know it's going to be dark. I'll start on the lower parts, just because I'm going to expect that to have a little bit more shading. All right, and then I can just kind of spread it. And I'm just doing it around the edges here. And then going out, so I'm starting darker towards the image. and then pulling it out. All right. <clears throat> I'm doing this pretty quick. I usually take a little bit more time when I'm doing this. Right. Again, notice how I got a little bit more color than I wanted, but if I try to kind of pull that out more, I'm going to run into a little bit of a problem because it can break down my paper. I can get everything else wet, smeared. All right. And you can see I got a little bit of green. I was a little bit too impatient. I usually let one layer dry before I do my next layer. And I'm just going to take that over there. So the memento will not bleed with the water. I mean, memento will bleed with the water, stays on, will not. So I'm just adding a little bit more color here. Up to you how much color you want. All right. And you can get as, you know, detailed as you want on there. I do need to add a little bit more color over here because I got that green. I want to cover that up. Okay. All right, let's squeeze that out. And now I'm going to take my flirty flamingo here, and I'm going to color my little heart. I'm pretty much coloring that solid. I'll take my water painter just a little bit just to get it blended a little. There we go. Okay, now I'm gonna set this side aside to dry, or I can take my uh, heat tool and dry it up a little bit. But like I said, I've already done it. There we go, so now I have that. I'm going to take my towel and get it with all this water on there. I'm going to set this here. I'm going to set this one right on top, but I am going to put dimensionals on all of it. So let's go ahead. We'll flip this over, grab my dimensional sheet here. I've been doing quite a bit of work that I have a bunch of leftover dimensional pieces. So that's what I'm really using here. I'm not going to really worry too much about the top. I just want to have a little bit on the balance on the bottom. That way it's not standing up too far when I put it in the envelope. So I'll put this down right here. Hi, Diane. 
All right, and now I'm going to take some more dimensionals and I'm going to put this on the edges here. So when I first stamped, I didn't stamp very, I didn't have my uh, stamp inked up well enough, so I flipped it over, added a little more. All right. So now here, what I'm going to end up having to do is putting a little bit more dimensionals on the top because I already have a layer. So let's just grab a couple of these. And where's my top? This is my top. Oop. So I'm just going to add just a couple here. Because I already have this on dimensionals, I want to make sure that it's even and not going to tip back and sit funny. All right, so I'll get these pieces off. Maybe I will. Those little backings, I tell you, they stick really well. Okay. Put this over. Set it right on top. All right, and now we just need to add our bow. So I am going to take a glue dot and I'm going to add my bow with a glue dot. I happen to have some extras left over from my paper pumpkin kit. So we're just going to peel a glue dot off. I just want to get that backing and I'm going to take my bow to my glue dot. I'm going to push and then I can take it and put it wherever I want. There we go. And, whoops, I almost threw my glue dots away. Let's just add a little bling here. Let's see what kind of bling I have. You know what? We'll just add some of these. And this is the um, 2024 In Color Shimmer Gems. So I'm going to take some of the pink, I think, here. And I'm just trying to find my take-a-pick tool. Where did I put it? There it is. And... <clears throat> I'll add maybe one right here. Let's just add one there. We'll add a larger one here. And I think we'll add another small one. No, we'll just put it right up there. All right. So that is today's hump day lunch break. Hope you enjoyed the watercolor pencil fun. Uh, if you do try watercolor pencils, hey, go there and post it on my group. I'd love to see your picture. Uh, you know, join the group and just share because everyone in that group is so friendly. Everyone will say, wow, what an awesome job you did. How did you do that? So you get a little sense of community over there. So that's my, my stamp studio VIP group. It is, uh, it's open to the public. So, um, come join me and we'll see you tomorrow night at 644 for our day four of our 30 day video challenge. All right. Take care. Oh, Becky, did you get your card in the mail? I was just curious. I heard some people got there. Some people did not. I just wanted to make sure. So if you just let me know, I'd appreciate that. Because if you didn't, then I'll get another one sent out for you. All right. Have a wonderful day. And we'll see you tomorrow night.